Well, let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Hey, do you want to pray for us? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity, Lord, this privilege to come together uh, with our minded brothers and sisters. Lord, and to speak about um, the importance of medical missionary work and uh, also our experiences. Mm -hmm. Father, I just ask that uh, first and foremost that your Holy Spirit would be here with all of us, that you would convict us things uh, of things, Lord, that uh, need to change or need improvement in our lives, and uh, strengthen us, Father, uh, to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You know, a quote that Mr. Steve uh, said earlier, every Every Seventh Day Adventist, a medical missionary, and like, imagine if that was the case. Imagine if every Seventh Day Adventist had, you know, the accurate understanding of the gospel and what Jesus did for us on the cross and what He wants to do for us even right now, which we'll get into. But also had a, a knowledge base of health, healthy lifestyle principles. And there's some powerful quotations. Um, that we're going to look at. It's really neat. I think it would be a great place to to start by following Christ, right? Because we want to follow Christ's example. And actually, matter of fact, the, the word Christian, what does it mean? Be yeah. Christ -like. It means to be Christ-like or to follow Christ's examples. Like, oh, okay, they're, they're, they're Christians. That means they're following after Christ. They're following Christ. And so I think many times we claim that title without actually following Christ. And we do a great disservice for Jesus, for Christ, because we're 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 living one way, but we're claiming to be another, and that's you know we call that hypocrisy. <laughs> and um, you know I've been I've been you know, guilty for being a hypocrite many times, and so I just want to be faithful in every area area and allow Christ to to teach me and to direct me. So the word Christian literally means to follow Christ's example. And there's a phenomenal quotation, you've all heard it, but it's Christ's method alone. We want to follow after Christ. Well, it goes like this, and you've heard it many times, but Christ's method alone will give true success. You want to be successful? Mm -hmm. okay. We'll follow Christ's method alone. Uh, it's true success in reaching the people, the Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. This is something that has to come from, find a seat, definitely. Um, has to come from genuine compassion for other people. Like, oftentimes it's nice, okay, yeah, I, I want to help others, I want to care for others like Jesus did, but oftentimes we care for others with selfish motivation. We say, we're not actually mingling with, mingling with others for their sake, we're mingling with others for our own sake. So we can have fulfillment, so we can feel value, so we can have self-worth, or sore, or even so we can look better in the eyes of those around us. So to be Christ-like and to be have true success, we have to mingle with men as one who desired their good, not our good. So I, I love that. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence, and then did what? Bid them follow me. Or is this a little different? What, what would we say? Bid them follow me or bid them follow Christ? Or you could say, as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I just say follow Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, uh, especially AJ and Greg, they're you know, presenting on this too with, with me. But I just happen to be the one that has a PowerPoint. <laughs> so maybe we can look at our Bibles. Maybe Greg, can you look up Luke? 4.18 Luke 4.18 because we want to learn from Christ the great physician the great creator the great teacher the great evangelist the great everything and this, and this morning we thought like wow what would it be like if you had the greatest health teacher come to your church and do the greatest program that would be pretty cool sometimes we invite Mark Finley oh people come for that right we, come, we invite somebody else or or um, a well-known speaker, Doug Batchelder or something. <coughs> the thing is, imagine if Christ came to your church. Well, Christ wants to live in and through you. He can't. And the only thing that's stopping that is ourselves. So let's look. Mar uh, Luke 4, 18 to 21. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted 
to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. You preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on And he began to say to them, This day is this scripture fulfilled. In wow. Your ears. So a lot of powerful things from there. But what were some of the things that you remember that was Christ's mission? Like what did he set out to do? Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Heal the broken hearted. To heal the, the broken hearted. Okay. Gospel to the poor. And set at liberty. Set at liberty. Amen. How many people do you know that are broken? <laughs> yeah, me. You know. He's, he's restoring me by God's grace. How many people do you know that are uh, in bondage to different sins, to different, you know, uh, habits, whatever it is? Now, I think this is the beauty of the gospel that we're all going to get into. It's just our God is so powerful that not only can he create the worlds and create us and create all this, but he can actually, he has the power to take the sin out of your life, to remove your vices, to remove your sins. But liberty is key. He's not going to do that forcefully. You need, you need to give it to him. So it, it's a free exchange that he wants to do and the one thing that is really neat here is, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath done what? Anointed. anointed. So Jesus needed some anointing, you know. And he needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit right from birth. Just like John the Baptist was and, and others. And, uh, uh, and who else? Was Samson. Say it again. He was fully man and fully God. Amen. So the man part of him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. That, thank you for bringing that up. But that anointing is, you know, is what does that make you think of? It makes me think of oil, right? And when you think of the Bible, what does that make you think of? The Holy Spirit, right? Has anointed me. Well, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. So the Holy Spirit is the one that brings the power to all of this. And so before we even do any kind of medical missionary work or, or, or any kind of work, really, period, we need the Holy Spirit. Because... Any good fruit comes by who? God. God, through the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you know, author of everything, needed that also. Right? He needs to be filled with human side, human aspect, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just going a little further in the, in the book of Luke, uh, you don't need to go very much further before he's already starting his healing work. Luke, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 38. Can you, are you there? I am there. Yep. 38 to 41. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife, mother, was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, you said 41? Yep. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them, and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them and suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. So right after he's anointed, filled the Holy Ghost, filled the Spirit, it was from the beginning. But this is more applying it to us. He immediately started doing medical missionary work. You know, 80% of what Jesus did was what? Health ministry, okay. medical missionary work. Mm -hmm. I say it's it was combining. It, it, it's not really two different works. It's the same work, <laughs> restoration, um, and bringing healing, spiritual and physical. But there is somebody taken with a great fever. Have any of you ever had a fever? <laughs> yeah, that's you know. Sometimes we think of oh, leprosy, even though leprosy is still around today. But we think of that as oh, that's a Bible disease. Right. Well, this is fever. We got fevers today. Can we help people with fevers? Yes. Oh yeah, we can. We could actually aid in that process of the fever. It's a very uh, excellent system, God-given, and uh, won't really get into that now. But he helped somebody with the fever, and then immediately, what did that person do after she had 
healing in her life. She ministered. She ministered. Yes. Popped up and cooked. Yes. Amen. Amen. Get a cooking school. Get a cooking class, maybe. You know? <laughs> yes. And then and then great multitudes, well, he needed her. Because great multitudes were about to come after they after they heard the healing gospel here. Well, here's another powerful and I have a list of here of examples of where Jesus is healing people. You know, you've got Peter's mother-in-law, which we just looked at. Jesus forgives and heals the paralyzed man that was lowered through the roof. You know, because of other medical missionaries that were bringing the paralyzed individual to Jesus. Some people, like Philip, just bringing people to Jesus. The crippled woman's spine was restored in the synagogue. This individual case was really neat because that woman wasn't necessarily going to Jesus for healing. Like, she wasn't, like, saying, trying. She just happened to be there. And the Lord healed her. So, there's something for just being with believers, being at church. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, there's a message there too. The blind man calls out to Jesus. Jesus heals him. The leper who comes to Jesus was healed. Again, leprosy, that's a, interestingly enough, it's, a, it's, a, it's by the bacterium lapro, leprobacterium, myolaprobacterium. It's a, it's a viral disease, interestingly enough, and, uh, which is contagious. But Jesus went to him anyway. I'm not saying disregard, you know, other things, but. It wasn't a barrier for him. But here's a powerful quote that leads into where we're, where part of what we're talking about goes into. Listen to this. This is from, uh, this is from Review and Herald, uh, December 17, 1914. Medical missionary work is the pioneer work of the gospel, the door through which the truth for this time is to find entrance to many homes. Mm. God's people are to be genuine medical missionaries. For they are to learn to minister to the needs of both soul and body. So that's what we need to learn. We need to come to retreats like this and learn right from the Bible and spirit prophecy. And, and by doing, learn the gospel and medical missionary work. The purest, man, the purest unselfishness it is to be shown by our workers as with the knowledge and experience gained by practical work. They go out to, be, to give treatments to the sick. As they go from house to house, they will find access to many hearts. Many will be reached who otherwise never would have heard the gospel message. So, what was some things that stood out to you right there in that book? Pioneer work of the gospel. Pioneer work of the gospel. So, the beginning. What else? What stood out to me, you know, it would be good if it was up front, but as they go from house to house, that's what stood out to me. Oftentimes we think of homes of healing. Okay, everybody comes to me, to my home. Although that's beautiful, that's great, that's an aspect of it, and that's great. It should happen. But it's not limited to that. If you don't have a home where people can come to, you don't have a spare bedroom, or you don't have running water or hot water heater, or you don't have <laughs> electricity, you can still do medical missionary work by going house to house and doing medical missionary work. And so there's countless other quotes we'll go to, but maybe I'll just share a quick testimony and, and then... We can open the floor, and, uh, but uh, you know, I've, I've I've been a Bible worker for probably about a year now, I think. And uh, many times uh, we'll do a Bible study, and and you know, because we're genuinely interested in the individual themselves, they'll say, "Oh, I've had this headache, or I've had this, or I've had this. Uh, my blood pressure is out of control, or or there's a a, a, a young person, a, a child in the back room that has an earache." Or maybe I show up, actually this was one circumstance where I showed up for the Bible study and, and she said, I don't think we can do it today, my son's got a terrible hearing. Well that's okay, have you ever heard of an onion poultice? Do you have an onion in your home? And so right there, no Bible study that day, we did onion poultice class. <laughs> we talked about onion poultice, we made up some garlic oil, and right then and there. And uh, even in, um, you know, so that, that was one testimony. We could share this, you know. Did it work? Absolutely. You know, onion onion does a, a very good job at reducing the inflammation and the heat itself, you know, soothing the ear infection, but also, um, you know, the antihistamine reduces the inflammation. You have the, the, oh, what's the active and anti-inflammatory agent? The antihistamines in the onion, which are decreasing inflammation, which is the source of the pain. And But what was the mother's reaction? Oh, it was amazing once the child can calm down. Yeah. 
Uh huh. So he did both, a double header, garlic oil and onion poultice. I have mm -hmm. not heard of the garlic oil. I've done the onion, onion poultice, mm -hmm. but what about the garlic oil? How on earth do you make garlic oil? Yeah, so you just, you know, I take a little bit of olive oil, typically is the carrier, and I, you know, dice up. I crush the garlic and I chopped up really finely. And I usually, because I don't have, oftentimes people don't have small pots, but I take a big pot and I tip it on its edge so just, you know, the bottom of it is on the burner. And it's very low. You just give it to basically when there starts to be bubbles that are coming up. Not boiling, but just, yeah. And then uh, and you have your garlic in there and, and you kind of make it an infusion with a little heat to speed up the process. And then you take a little bit of that oil, make sure it's not hot as it was on the burner, and then put it in the ear. Hmm. And something like that, you can put some gauze to block it. You strain? Yeah, yeah, no garlic should go in the ear. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. just wanted to make that yeah. <laughs> So that, that, was, that was natural remedies class also. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have, but I what didn't are, know that one. AJ. Well, I just wanted to, uh, to kind of back up a little bit. Uh, in Matthew 24, we're all kind of familiar. Mm -hmm. Does anybody believe we're living in the last days? Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen. absolutely. And in Matthew uh, chapter 24, if we go there, you know, Jesus is giving signs of things that are going to take place, you know, before the second coming and, you know, the tribulation that happened um, for the disciples and throughout history. Um, but starting in verse 12, he says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And then verse 14, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now I just have a question. When you guys hear that verse, the gospel of the kingdom, what, is that, what does that make you think of? This gospel of the kingdom should be going through all the world as a witness, and then the end shall come. The love of Jesus. The love of Jesus and that he's coming soon. Amen. Amen. Three Amen. angels' message. Yes. Three angels' message. Sure. And the love there in verse 12 is about being It's completely unselfish love. Right. That's the gospel that's going to go through. Exactly. Another thing that I think of is, you know, we have the gospel, which is deliverance, which is freedom, which is, um, you know, I don't have to die. You know, Christ died for me. Praise the Lord. But then also, we've got the right arm of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So the full gospel is both of those things. The health ministries. Health and animal. Amen. Like Christ. Amen. Any more comments? I think of the rock that comes and destroys us. Smashes the image. The image at the end. Yeah. That's Christ himself. Amen. Amen. You know, if you, if you just kind of look at that term, it says in 14, gospel of the kingdom. So... And if we can just like quarry that phrase, gospel of the kingdom, we can find a couple places where you know it talks about Jesus in connection with the gospel of the kingdom. And one of those verses, there's two we can look at, but one is, is in Matthew 4, verse 23. And it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So there he is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And then it says this, And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases, among the people. So it was connected with the gospel of healing. 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 And then there's another verse that corroborates it. There's many verses. But in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, it says pretty much the same thing. And Jesus went, all, went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So there he is, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Amen. So it's interesting, if we believe that Jesus is coming back very soon, and I would say that this is a, a prophetic chapter, Matthew 24, obviously, that if we're to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom, something that is so closely connected with that is the medical missionary. Amen. So that's just the one point I want to emphasize. Yeah. Amen. Can I piggyback on that point? Yeah. It made me think of a verse in Mark chapter 1, talking about the gospel of the kingdom, talking about an association and link with medical missionary work and what Jesus was doing as he was bringing the everlasting gospel. It says here Mark 1 verse 15 verse 14 we'll start there. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee what was he doing? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. When he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, what was he saying? What was associated with that? And saying, verse 15 the time is fulfilled. 
So Jesus, when he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, also draws the attention to time or to prophecy. Right? So we see the gospel, we see it going hand in hand with medical missionary work, hand in hand with prophecy. And what does he say? And the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye, message of repentance, turning away from sin, whether it be violation of moral law or natural law, and believe the gospel. So, the gospel, prophecy, medical missionary work, repentance, all together here in the ministry of Christ. Mm. So, God's going to raise up a people in the last day called the remnant. If this is what Jesus was doing in the original, we would expect that the remnant might come forward with a message that looks very much like the original. Right? And we might expect, just like in the work of the original was a revelation of Christ's righteousness here on earth, that in the remnant, as they engage in this work and their Savior is living in their heart, there would be a revelation of Christ's righteousness, maybe that lightens the world with His glory in the last days. But not one element of these things will be left out by those who do it. Amen. Mm. The enemy of souls would like to strip out critical and crucial elements from the gospel. Because in Revelation 14, let's go to Revelation 14. I don't want to take up, you know, you guys jump in any time. This is just kind of on the fly, right? So Revelation Amen. 14. You probably want to take a look at something because this is this is concerning us today. Revelation 14, verse 6. Now, I praise the Lord that these verses should be very familiar to us. Because if you're sitting here today and you consider yourself a Seventh-day Adventist, your commission, your work, your marching orders from your general are right here. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we never want to accept from anybody, no matter who we are, now we may love them very much, but we never want to accept the idea that Satan's trying to push around now that somehow these messages need to be lessened, moved out of the work, or somehow they're not loving. Certainly they could be presented in an unloving way, right? We want to be careful that our hearts are always connected with Jesus. We're receiving that agape love, right? We can't originate agape, right? That's a gift from God. But as we receive that gift from God, there's a fulfillment here of prophecy relating to this message. And it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Now here's a message that the remnant's going to bring because we see down, if you look down in verse 14 real quick, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And then he reaped, right? So this is the final message to go forward before Christ's second coming and before the close of probation, right? So God's remnant people will give this message in verse 6, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. So God's people, the remnant, will have this everlasting or eternal gospel, which is the gospel that Jesus brought. Jesus came and revealed to the universe, not just to mankind, right? This is the great controversy. He revealed to the universe the everlasting gospel, which was a mighty revelation of the character of God, which answers the radical accusations that the devil has made against the character of God. Mm-hmm. And in doing this, he saw fit in this process to bring about a revelation of something that we refer to as medical missionary work. I call it New Covenant medical missionary work. You've heard me say true medical missionary work before. But I call it New Covenant medical missionary work because there are counterfeits of medical missionary work. But the only true medical missionary work that Jesus modeled is the medical missionary work that's in harmony with the New Covenant principle. We do not want Old Covenant medical missionary work. And it says here, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth. So it's going to include medical missionary work. It's going to include prophecy. It's going to include repentance. It's going to include all of these things. And to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God, give glory to him. So now the gospel is going forward, but now we have saying, just like we saw Mark, Jesus saying the gospel of the kingdom, saying, 
right? And then we saw an enumeration of some of what Jesus was including in that proclamation of the gospel. Here we have an enumeration, fear God. What is fear God likened to in the scripture? Respect. Respect. Or awe. Respect to awe. Mm -hmm. It's also all through Deuteronomy, chapter 8, chapter 6, other places there. You see it's directly linked with keeping his commandments. Yeah. Fear God. He is the one that is worthy. He is the authority. He's the creator. We will keep his commandments because we are subjects of his kingdom. He's a creator with a creature. The Sabbath just has to be where he put his name in that and signed it and showed who it all comes from. I'm the one. I'm he. And by doing this, keeping the Sabbath, it's a sign between me and you that I am the one. Right? And so here it says, fear God and give glory to him. Give me some verses about giving glory to God as remnant Christians. For the hour of his judgment has come. We have the first angel's message. Okay. Yeah. Amen. That's where we're in. Whatever Bible. Whatever what, what, what verses are we talking about? It's a good one. 1031. First 10, Corinthians. First Corinthians 1031. Okay. Pause that for a moment. Praise the Lord for that. Give me another verse on giving glory to God. All power and glory is given to him. Five. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, saints... We need to give glory to God in certain ways that the Bible tells us. And the Apostle Paul, in that verse that you outlined, was very specific in ways. But what else does the Apostle Paul, I'll give you a hint, in the same book, tell us to give glory to God in? Give me a verse. Seven day events. With our bodies. Okay, go to six, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Let's go there. Let's go there. That's a good one. Right? That's what I was looking for. Okay. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Hold your, hold your place in Revelation for a minute. 1 Corinthians 6.19. And then we can get back on the okay. sanitarium work. Yes, please. And, and read what? 20 as well. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify your glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God, which are God. Okay. King James says which are his, right? Mm -hmm. And so... 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and 20, which are God's. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Why? For you were bought with a price. What was that price? The blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus. Is that a cheap price or an expensive price? The most expensive price. Mm -hmm. Are you invaluable? Are you extremely valuable? Right? Do you have little value or do you have a lot of value? A lot. Right? The value of an object is determined by the one who's willing to pay the price. We're free market gospel people. Right? God paid the ultimate price to buy us. And did he just buy the spirit or did he buy the body too? Both. He bought both. So if we're going to have a message of giving glory to God, is it going to be to the spirit only or giving glory to God in the body and the spirit, which are his? Because he's bought it. Is that related to the gospel? Mm -hmm. So can we see how health reform or medical missionary work has a direct link to the gospel by the blood of Christ being paid for your body? Amen. We see that, right? Therefore, it makes sense that when that was lost sight of by that little horn power that would cast the truth to the ground and the sanctuary to the ground and feed you your pork and bean dinners on Sunday, that this light of truth would arise to prepare people for Christ's second coming. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to Revelation. And then we'll finish up right here. We can move on to our original topic here. Mm -hmm. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. How? In the body and the spirit which are His. Specifically, Paul, outlining in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Whatsoever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So give glory to God in all that you do. But specifically here, he wants to make sure he's drawing our attention to how we eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Does how we eat or drink affect us physiologically mm -hmm. uh, to have a capability to hear or respond to the Holy Spirit better Absolutely. or worse? Does it? Right? Absolutely, right? And there's going to be those that receive the seal of God. So this is a necessary message, right? And let's see here. Four, because the hour of his judgment has come. Because it's the investigative judgment. I think I'm getting tomorrow's message. Mm -hmm. Because it's the investigative judgment, this truth is going to be proclaimed by God's people to prepare a people to stand in the investigative judgment. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Can I read a spirit prophecy quote now? Just to bring us back. 
Amen. What are some of the methods that God's going to use? Is he just going to have just those people who go to Eden Valley and Yuchi Pines and, uh, and Misty Mountain and Quebrada Leon and get their studies there to now those ones to be the medical missionaries that are going to proclaim this message and those alone? So or is God calling? It's worldwide. What one among God's people is not called to be a medical missionary? Is there anyone? Because the quote I remember says all God's people, right? And we don't say that with a critical spirit, right? We're all growing. We're all learning, right? I have a lot of growing to do. But this is part of the message of the everlasting gospel that God's calling us to embrace and recognize the value in and not worry against. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I want to read you here in Review and Herald. May 25th, 1897. Why has it not been understood from the word of God that the work being done in medical missionary lines is a fulfillment of the scripture? Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. The servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. What's the fulfillment of that work? Medical missionary work, she said. Okay? This is a work that the churches in every locality, north and south, east and west, should do. Notice what she calls out there. This is a testimony of Jesus, right? We're together on that. Mm -hmm. right? This is Jesus' testimony. All the churches are to be involved in this work, right? And whether they're in the north or the south or the east or the west, and it says, the churches have been given the opportunity of answering this work. Why have they not done it? Someone must fulfill the commission. Is that important? Now watch this. The Lord gave me great light on health reform. Amen. We would expect that as God's mm -hmm. remnant messenger to bring present truth to the remnant people that the word of God just proclaimed. This message would come forward. In connection with my husband, I was to be a medical missionary worker. The prophet of God was not just to go around and proclaim present truth messages as light a testimony of Jesus was given her utterance. She was to do that. Praise the Lord for that. But it even goes deeper than that. Even though she was given the spirit of prophecy. I was to be a medical missionary worker. I was to, listen carefully, I was to set an example to the church. How? By taking the sick to my home and caring for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She did. We're talking about yes, home, mm -hmm. sanitarium, work. Mm -hmm. God even showed the messenger that she was to be an example and that she was to now bring them into her home. <clears throat> this I have done, giving the women and children vigorous treatment. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there so I don't read too much more. Yeah, it's powerful. But this is present truth. Opening your home to those that are suffering and sick and in need is the fulfilling of the commission of the king to go on the hedges, the highways, and bring them in. You are actually being the servant of God in doing that work. And I think one of the things that maybe we should talk on here, because if this is part of the, the discussion, it may be a practical part of the discussion, what does that look like? Because that can maybe seem a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I'm opening my home, bringing some, the practical. Yeah, we're right. bringing some people in. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. I don't want to give God's work a bad name. Maybe I don't feel confident in my ability to do these things. Mm -hmm. Is it the right time for me and my family? There's lots of things to consider. Maybe, maybe they'll never leave. Maybe they'll never leave. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Things to consider, but just on that, like, do I have enough space? Is this you no know, good? Well, here's a here's a a piece of encouragement to that. 
The obligation resting upon us to keep the body in health is an individual responsibility. Salvate, okay. The Lord requires each one to work out his own salvation day by day. He bids us reason from cause to effect to keep, to remember that we are his property and to unite with him in keeping our body pure and healthy. The whole body being sanctified. Check this out. God will bless, God's blessing will rest upon every effort made to awaken an interest in health reform. For it is needed everywhere. There must be a revival in regards to this matter. For God purposes to accomplish much through this agency. Present temperance with all its advantages in reference to health. Educate the people in regards to the laws of life. And it continues. But God's blessing rests upon any, any desire towards this work. Any work in this regard to awaken uh, uh, a desire for health reform. For temperance and all its advantages and so you may think okay i don't know how to do this or i'm not the best or i'm not the most qualified or i don't know as much as greg or or as rob or or whatever whoever it is pick your person right doesn't matter do you know something and the thing is is you know the holy spirit because again we've got to be anointed anointed by the holy spirit and if we're stepping aside and allowing christ he will teach us and instruct us and I do believe there's supernatural instruction that takes place. Or, oh, I think that this would be the, the next step. But also the Holy Spirit will guide us to things like this. And also to uh, different areas where we should study and, and things of that nature. So practically, uh, how, how that has gone. And maybe how have you done it in your home, AJ? And then how have you done it in your home, Greg? May Order. I? May I? Yeah. Before we go into practical stuff, read one more quote. Yeah. I think piggybacks off of sure. that very nicely. Yeah. And um, this is from Medical Ministry 251. Medical Ministry. Pick that thing up. Pick that book up. Um, it's it's amazing. And so, one of the things to, to consider here, uh, as as you're talking about that, Josiah, is. We all recognize we're living in the closing scenes of this history, right? Yeah, yes. AJ just said that. Yeah, this is it. We're in it. Soon there's going to be a final test in the Mark of the Beast crisis. Right? That's just before us. Mm -hmm. Now, some might say you're a mere alarmist by saying that. But I can say on authority of the Word of God with the Word of prophecy that we have, seeing prophecy being fulfilled in the world, also prophecy being fulfilled in the church. Mm. We're in the shaking time. Ceiling is upon us very soon. King of the North is rising. Mm -hmm. Brickworks being laid for the image to the beast. Mm -hmm. You guys look at the house bill that just passed recently that totally undermines. Uh, well, we won't go there. Anyway, I'm not going to go into current events. You guys get it. Hey, we'll be here all day. You started. You got to keep it going. <laughs> so here's here's where we're at. Mark of the beast is upon us soon. That's the final test. God works with us to prove us and test us and try us leading up to the final test in mercy to prepare us to stand true to God in the final test. God has commissioned us with the everlasting gospel, which includes medical missionary work, which includes home sanitarium work, because a prophet was an example for us by bringing people into our home. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's not just wait for the big institutions to rise that are going to have 30 beds. You get what I'm saying? Open your home. I'm here to tell you today, but this is all by the grace of God. Please, please, please recognize this is all glory to God. We have never had a person come and stay in our home and do a program that did not come out accepting Jesus as a personal Savior. Mm -hmm. And do you want to know why? Christ's methods work. Mm -hmm. Christ's love melts the heart. Christ's spirit does the work. Mm -hmm. When you're washing feet, the spirit of God will work through you in a different way than you've ever experienced any other time. Mm -hmm. It will do a heart work in you. You are being tremendously blessed in that work. Right? So I just want to read this to you. Medical Ministry 251. True sympathy. What kind of sympathy? True. True. Amen. True sympathy between man and his fellow men is to be the sign. What's that word? Sign. Is that an important word in the last days? Mm -hmm. Okay is to be the sign, what's the sign? True sympathy. 
between men and fellow men, is to be the sign distinguishing those who love and fear God from those who are unmindful of his law. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a distinguishable sign between those who love and fear God and those who are unmindful of his law? Right? And what's this here? True sympathy between man and his fellow men is to be the sign. Okay? How great the sympathy that Christ expressed in coming to this world to give his life a sacrifice for a dying world. Mm. That was the expression of Christ's sympathy in that sacrifice, right? Okay. His religion led to the doing of genuine medical missionary work. Mm -hmm. The religion of Christ. Are we Christians? So if we're true Christians, we will have the religion that brings us to the doing of genuine medical missionary work, which is a sign of the sympathy that exists between us and other men and that the law of God is in our heart. That's what distinguishes us. Watch this. He was a healing power. And he is today. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, he said. This is the test. What's that word? Test. Okay. Power. This is so important. You know why the devil wants to cut off the right arm? Mm. Don't be surprised. Do you think he knows these things? Mm. This is the test. Let me find my spot here. That the great author of truth used to distinguish between true religion and false. Mm. In the last days, will there be a distinction between true religion and false? Mm. What was the test that the great author used to distinguish between the two? Medical missionary work. Medical missionary work. Okay. Mm -hmm. It seems like that ties right in with the theme of be doers and not only hearers of the word. Amen. It says, God wants his medical missionaries to act with the tenderness in compassion that Christ would show were he in our world. Mm -hmm. Amen. That requires the infilling of Christ's love and love. And is that what's needed to stand in the mark of the beast crisis? Mm -hmm. That's it. Awesome. I just, that thought, I, yeah, I mean, there's just so many quotations and scriptures run through my head now, but to kind of back it up a little bit and say, okay, what does this practically look like? How can I, how can I start applying this in my life? Um, well, there's one Bible verse I want to read first. It's 2 Corinthians 8.12. It says, For if there first be first a willing mind. Mm -hmm. So if there's first a willing mind, if that's the first thing, it is accepted according to what a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Mm -hmm. So what that's saying there is, if we, are, if we have our mindset, we are going to do this work, not us, but we're going to allow God to do this work in us. We are mm -hmm. going to give ourselves for him to work through us. If our mind is willing, we don't need to be worried about not having the information or having whatever, whatever it would be. God will make a way for those things to happen because all he needs is a, is a willing spirit. And, um, you know, what is medical missionary work? What is, I mean, there's so many different... You know, some people think about hydrotherapy, some people think about poultices, and some people think about, you know, raking lawns for somebody who just can't do it anymore, or whatever it happened to be. But there's a good quotation um, in uh, Councils on Health 540, and it sums it up very perfectly. It says, the work of the true medical missionary is largely a spiritual work. Amen. It includes prayer and the laying on of hands. Mm. He therefore should work as sacredly set apart for his work as is the minister of the gospel. Amen. Those who are selected to act the part of the of missionary physicians are to set apart are to be set apart as such. Amen. She keeps going on about that. It's um, Councils on Health 540. So it's a largely spiritual thing. And I just want to ask you guys a question. What do, what do you think is more important if? Say you have, you know how to do some type of medical missionary work and you're bringing in people off the streets and you ha help somebody stop smoking and, you know, they're praising God that you, they, and they, they're not, they got their diabetes reversed or whatever it happened to be. They lost 50 pounds. They're jogging. They're feeling great. Everybody's looking at him like a health spectacle. Mm -hmm. But then you add 30, 40 years to that guy's life and then he dies. And then he wakes up at the end of the thousand year mm -hmm. in the second resurrection. What good will any of that, of those health principles done for him? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yes. So I had a guy, um, 
he was visiting with us and he, he was dealing with cancer and he was following a lot of the principles that we know uh, help you with, uh, you know, battling cancer. And, and it was working. And I was impressed to tell him, I says, one thing thou lackest. <laughs> and he says, what? I says, you need to go to church. You need Jesus to be the center of all these things. That's right. And, and, you know, all these things respond, but when you tie them with Jesus, he's the great healer, and right. he works through these methods. Amen. Amen. It was just like, oh, I didn't know that. That's right. You know, that comes from him. Wow. That's right. He showed up in church in that day. Amen. Praise right. the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so, so what, I just want to hear from you guys, what should be our goal then? It seems like when we're helping people in any way we can, what is the ultimate goal? Nice. Right. It's to bring them to a relationship with Christ or bring them to that decision. Yes. I, I would, I totally agree with that. But I also would go back to a quote that I'm not sure which person read that talked about how when Jesus came, like when he healed Peter's mother in law, yes. that there was not, he, he healed every disease mm. in that area. That's right. And I'm certain he didn't just do that for people who accepted him. Oh, yeah. right, of you course. Know what I'm saying? Of course. And so there's a part of me that says, and I'm so delighted that God is powerfully blessed in the ministry of your home. Mm. But I'm also, there's a question in my mind. <clears throat> I guess the question in my mind is, is it, would God want us to absolutely open our doors to give love and care to anyone that God brings Amen. to us, mm -hmm. irrespective of their response? Mm -hmm. I think so. I, I don't know. Just, and I would just say one thing really quickly. Also, we've had many people come to our home, and sometimes it's only for a few hours. Did not even always overnight. Mm -hmm. And I just took someone to Tammy's house mm -hmm. and saw God work in an amazing way. And so I see how God can use even small pieces of time. Mm -hmm. in the I don't think we should worry about whether or not they're going to accept Christ mm -hmm. because that's God's work. Right. I mean, it's our way to present them. But it's the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that does the convicting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And God tells us to, to suffer long and be kind, yeah. Yeah. no matter who it is, and to love those who persecute us. So even if we save them to be a persecutor later, that's that's up to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, sister. Thank you for that point. You know, um, True medical missionary work is built on the character of God and built on the everlasting covenant. And if we're going to understand who we're to open our homes to, one of the best places to look is at the cross. At the cross, did Jesus make atonement? I'm not going down too far down this road. Yeah. Some, of you, some of you know. I'm not going too far. Did, did Jesus make atonement at the cross? He made atonement. He made atonement for sin mm -hmm. at the cross. Was that atonement that he made made available for everybody in the world, whether they would accept him or reject him? Was it available yes. Yes. for them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Should our homes be open and available for everybody, whether or not they're going to accept Christ as a Savior or not? Yeah. Absolutely. But Christ did it with the desire in his heart that all would be saved. Mm -hmm. And Christ ministered in his life and in the heavenly sanctuary in a way that has a desire that all would be saved. Amen. And he does everything possible with every individual personally to make it as easy as possible mm -hmm. to remove the stumbling blocks, to draw them out that they might be saved. One of the reasons why he didn't rebuke Judas, we read in the Spirit of Prophecy, is because he knew that Judas would have just booked it. Mm -hmm. And so Christ worked with that loving sensitivity, even though he knew. What was coming? What was you see that? So the, the, he washed his feet. Mm -hmm. So the idea, so what you're bringing out is a very important point. And, you know, I've had people come to our home, and the words before being treated were this. 
you're never going to convince me that a guy dying on the cross has anything to do with me. That's how it started. On day four, he accepted Jesus to save. <laughs> That's a miracle. The cross makes miracles possible. Every one of us who are saved, it's a miracle. So bring them into your home, even if it's for a meal. Just one meal. Miracles can happen in a meal. And remember, we're sowing seeds. We don't always see how it's going to sprout and mature and all that. But God's calling us to sow the seed, right? And that's what Home Center is about. Amen. Amen. So maybe let's make it a little bit more. This is powerful. It is equally as good. But let's make it practical to how can it actually be done in your home? And so, you know, a couple things that maybe some advantages. And then I'd like AJ to touch on a, a, a testimony he has. But it's actually you have an advantage if you have a home. If you have a home, it's, it's the, well, it's not only that, because we read a quote, the initial quote was, go house to house. In my case, I don't have the best home for this, although, praise the Lord, we still have people coming and, 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 and receiving benefit, and that's awesome. But in my case, it works out better to go to other people's homes and house to house. And so, but if you do have a home, it's not your home, it's a, it's a gift from God, and uh, it's His, ultimately, you're the steward of that Amen. home. But, um, and he wants you to use discernment of who you, you let into your home also and through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to, to decide that with you. But also you have an advantage because you know, going around things um, legally, thinking on those terms, our modern medical institutions will not be able to uh, go on for much longer in this, in this current economic and, and legal state. So if you're home, you can really have people much longer and you're more free now there are certain certain things that you you must be aware of such as you know you're not treating anybody and even i think even if you are a licensed practitioner of of a, of a certain scope um it might even be best not to say treating in your home it's even best just to have people as your guests because anybody can be your guest you can invite anybody in and we know from this quote that the, the most of our work is in health education. The only hope of better things is in education of the people in right principles. Let medical missionaries teach the people that restorative power is not in drugs but in nature. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. Unhealthful conditions should be changed. Wrong habits corrected. Then, then, then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions. Pure air, sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, and the use of water and trust in divine power. These are the remedies every person should have a knowledge of nature's remedial agencies. So each of us can live a life and invite people to live with us for a time. And that is medical missionary work. And because these are actually, you know, these are the doctors. These are the first remedies that we go to, the eight laws of health. And we should all be practicing them, you know, already. Now, with certain conditions, you emphasize certain things and do certain things a little bit differently. But you can do this in your home and say, hey, consider eating this. This is the reason why I think you should eat this. Here's the physiology behind it, to whatever scope you know. And, um, well, I like to take hot and cold showers when I'm in this state. I've got a nice shower that you could do that in. So invite people in. So I think one of the first things that you can do to make it real practical is to have an extra bedroom. If you have an extra bedroom, that is the perfect medical missionary setup. In your home, with an extra bedroom. Or a camper. Or a camper. Or so take it away, cabin. Expound on that. So, um, I have a few experiences. I won't draw on them all, but I'll say two, two of the most recent ones. I have, we have two different people staying with us. We've had one girl living with us for a little over a year, probably a year and a half now. And um, she's always been in the church, but she's not always been a Christian. She's had a very kind of dark uh, past, and um, she came to us, and she needed a place to stay, and, you know, my wife and I talked, and we said, well, we have this, the camper you can stay in, and um, she's been with us for a, a year and a half now, and she's baptized now. She's doing Bible studies. She just gave her testimony at our church a few weeks ago, and so, like, you know, our ministry towards her has been a largely just... Um, I guess you could say a shoulder, a place, a safe haven to just kind of lay low for a little bit. 
so she can get some money to, you know, afford an apartment or wherever else, you know. So that has been an as aspect of it. But during that time, because we had the extra space, you know, she's been drawn into family worship and been drawn into all the, the other stuff. And now she's, she's pretty on fire. And we have, I have a shop, which most of you guys probably know this guy. He's been living with me for about a year now. Um, his parents moved away. And he works with me. And um, this guy is a young, young, young man. He's been addicted to all sorts of video game stuff. I mean, he had all the gaming software you can imagine, the chair, the cushion, like just thousands of dollars of, of just video game stuff. And, you know, he's been, and it's not, obviously it's not us. We just provided the space and the spirit has been working. Um, but he's not doing any of those games anymore. So he's, mm. He got rid of all that stuff. Praise the Lord. And now he's actually talking about being rebaptized. Wow. Um, so these are, this is more of a largely spiritual work rather than, you know, doing poultices and, and showers and, and things like that. I don't think you need to limit it to that because right. that's an addiction. Right. And addiction right. has physical implications. Right. It, so. so there's been some healing there. Mm -hmm. When you bring them into your home, do you set down ground rules and say we aren't going to have those video games in the house or yes. in the, wherever you're staying? Okay. Well, first I didn't know there was the video game issue. <laughs> it kind of manifested after some time, and I was like, "Oh Lord, how do I, how do we deal with this?" So you asked them. Yeah, well, I, I, I put a lot of work on it. So it kind of was less time for the video games, and then uh, um, work is your friend. Work is uh, is a very good thing. So yeah, very important thing if you got people are going to stay with you long term is ground rules. You have to establish boundaries and, and, and perimeters that you know to keep the sacred circle. You don't want anything coming in there. You don't, you don't want to have any distractions. Um, even in the spirit of prophecy. So Cindy and I, we've always opened our house. We had we've got taken advantage of many times because we didn't set down ground rules at the beginning. Um, and then we read in the spirit of prophecy, you know, that Ellen White and others would open their houses, but it, they gave them wood to stack and, and gardens to weed. And if those things were not done when they, you know, and they gave them some great spirit, then they were asked not to come back. So, you know, it's not always just, oh, well, I got to be long suffering. They haven't done anything I asked so they can stay with me another three weeks because, you know, no, like we have to establish good ground rules, but in love and force them. And I think individually, God is going to show you how you how you present that. Um, so, as as far as the medical stuff goes, can I yes. say something because it pertains to that? So, to this is something to be aware of. Also, um, we do live in in this you know this climate of Earth's history. There are other legal things to be aware of yeah. because you touched on that. Um, when you invite somebody in your home, there's something called squatters' rights. And if somebody is in your home for more than 14 days, that is their residence. So something to be aware of. Um, so, uh, 14 days? Yeah, it's 14 days. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, it's just state, something to be aware of. State, and it's, right? getting, it's, a, it's, it's getting really bad. Yeah, this is pain. So be aware of that um, when you do do that. And really allow the Holy Spirit to guide you who's going to come in um, and who's not. So the long-suffering aspect... If, if, if you're long-suffering and you're enabling them to continue whatever the bad habit is, you're enabling them to sin. You're, and so we don't want to do that. We don't want to help them. So it's not out of any lack of love to say, you can't do that here because I don't want you to hurt yourself anymore. And I don't want to capacitate you to be able to do that. So it's no less love to say, you can't be here and do that because... Especially, like if you remove consequences from a child and they grow up without facing the consequences, that child becomes very, you're doing them a disservice. And if you remove the consequences of, let's say you said no smoking in the house, and you say, okay, it's okay for now, remove the consequence of having to leave, well, that, that doesn't do them any service. They're not learning cause and effect, which is one of the things that we teach, cause and effect. What is the cause of the disease? What is the cause of why people don't want you here, or people are, well, it's because of this aspect of things. So that's another legal aspect, but if you can stay away and be like, hey, invite, learn what I'm doing, see if these are recommendations based on physiology, based on health principles, come along with me and do that. As long as they want to do that with you, I think that's a good thing. So yeah. medical testimony. Yeah, I'll just, we've had a couple, um, we've had some really close friends. Um, so a, a good thing to have in your house is a, a bathtub. You can do many treatments in there. Uh, you can do hydrotherapy, you can do shower therapy, uh, fever baths, you know, um, 
some things you can do. Also, another really practical thing is a blender. Because um, a lot of people, they're just not getting enough minerals or vitamins. And if you can make green drinks and smoothies like that, I mean, in a, in a few days, I mean, you can get some good blood um, pumping through. And that was a testimony with one of our friends. Uh, she, she had cancer, and it, it wasn't looking very good. And she did end up dying. Um, but we believe the process was, was prolonged. Um, she'd come over to our house talk two or three times a week, and we'd do fever baths. Sydney would do fever baths with her. But it um, wasn't just that you believed it was prolonged. She was given just a couple months to live, yeah. and she oh, was yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, she had, she had time. Yeah. She had, it was prolonged, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then we just would we'd give her the green juices, and she'd stay with, you know, to have worship and dinner with us. And, mm -hmm. and uh, another really good thing is children. People are like, oh, the children are going to be in the way. i got to worry about the children. But the children are a huge blessing. Especially like the smaller they are, the cuter they are. It's just like it's just like you know. It just the whole atmosphere is is so much. I don't know. I don't know what the word is to describe it. Um, natural. Natural. It brings people together because they have such innocent love. Yes. Amen. So, so children are a big blessing. So I'd say, if you are wanting to do medical missionary work and you have children in your house. Don't let that be a hindrance. I mean, yes, there's a safety aspect there, um, but they can be a huge little blessing. And they like to help. They want to help uh, give foot, foot washes, and they want to help bring drinks into the room or whatever it would happen to be. They want to be very helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, I know with uh, we had another friend, a dear friend, Michael, who was with us for a while uh, in Sarnia for a few months. And, you know, we do the same thing. The children would come in there, and, you know, I believe it was a Brighton... A bright, a, a more bright experience, you know. Um, so that's those are kind of my testimonies that I have to say about that. You know, um, the idea is we want to invite people along with us uh, to share in the same experience that God is leading us in, so that they can have that too and take it with them. I know the Howes often say one of the most powerful things that they do is just invite people over for lunch. Um, many times we invite people over for lunch and it turns into a Bible study or some other conversation, whether philosophy or, or health-related topics. And, that's, and they just go away and wow, they, this space is very different from other spaces that they go in. So just the atmosphere of your home and your family has an incredible influence. Just get people over. Don't worry so much about what your house looks like. It's, it's often far better than where they're coming from. Another thing, you know, to go back to this, another testimony. Once I was, I was, um, I was going, I was going to share one. I'll share this. We were going door to door with a friend um, in a community where that's near me, and uh, and there is an individual we're actually handing out um, literature and inviting people to an event. And uh, the person wasn't really interested in that, but they, because they were so sick, they were in a. I don't remember the specific condition but they were in a lot of pain and um, we were able to you know say oh okay we'll try putting some heat on your back a fomentation and uh it was probably hypertonicity of paraspinal muscles in the back there and just really tight and um and it was compressing a nerve uh, yeah that's what it was sciatic pain running down the, the leg and very painful and so we said well try putting some some heat, a fomentation, and, and we explained what that was, and we even offered, we can even do it with you right now, <laughs> for you, and, uh, but we didn't do that, but she did it, and she ended up coming to the event, you know, so that's going to people's homes, which opens up the door through which more connection can take place, remember, genuine, you know, uh, what is going to give success in Christ's method is genuinely caring for them, no selfish motivation there, but wanting their well-being, and so, she received the, the recovery and you know part of her testimony was that um, you know she'd been all sorts of different uh, healthcare professionals trying to figure this out and I'm not going to say it was completely resolved after that but she got significant relief and she came another time doing a bible study the person had a terrible headache showed up they weren't ready for the bible study because they had a headache they seemed to tell me this right as I'm at their door but I'm okay with that because it gives me an opportunity so he said, okay, that's fine. Have you ever tried a hot foot bath? And I explained how that is and what it does. And it, it's, it is logical because it, it's reasonable and it makes sense. And so, yeah, sure, let's try that. And, um, and she felt better after that. And through the process of the hot foot bath, you're talking with them, you're you know, interacting with, it was a Bible study and a, and a hot foot bath. 
another time I was giving a massage to somebody, a uh, massage therapist, and, um, and it was a two-hour massage. It turned into a two-hour massage because we got to deliver an entire sanctuary Bible study during the massage. You don't always do that, but like it just opens the way uh, for all sorts of deep connections. So whatever you can do, even if it's just make a meal, even if it's just say, come over to my house and I'll listen. That's, that's key. That's huge. You got some testimonies? Well, sure. But uh, I'd, I'd like to touch on another point here for yeah. a minute and then be happy to share some testimonies. But mm-hmm. um, Key element to medical missionary work. One, receiving Christ's agape love for the person. Mm-hmm. Because that's what is required to minister with the love and sensitivity to meet the hurting, damaged person that oftentimes is living with a lot of anxiety about their condition. Listen, by the time we get them, I'm sorry to say this, by the time we get them usually, it's because they've been told, go get your affairs in order. Mm -hmm. We've done what we can do with you. You've had your six months of chemo. You can't do it anymore. Go get your affairs in order. Three months. That person Oftentimes, now listen, it's not every time. Sometimes it's just somebody that's got a broken heart. That person has a broken heart, by the way. Right? Their heart's broken. Christ's love and sensitivity in working with that soul is so... That may be the most healing element of anything. Nine-tenths of disease starts where? In the mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Got a broken heart, broken spirit. Needs Christ's love experienced in the heart. Right? And um, this work is a work that opens the heart to spiritual things. True spiritual things. This is a work that takes an atheist to be open to the view of a creator. Most atheists are atheists. Why? Wrong. They've been hurt. Wrong. That's right. A misunderstanding of the character of God. An eternally burning hell. All right. An eternally burning hell. And we have some misunderstandings of the character of God even in God's remnant movement. I've heard it from the pulpit. And I said, ooh, I don't serve the Calvinist God. You understand? Right? So we, we are a people who are to be bringing the character of God to these souls in Christ living in us with his agape love, which what? Opens the heart, makes it as easy as possible, right? For them to respond to his character. Now, when it comes to treatments, we're just talking practical stuff here for a moment, then I'd like to do one prophetic thing, if that's all right. One quote. Practical stuff. Knowing how to make healthy food is something that every Seventh-day Adventist should study. Mm-hmm. We should be having cooking classes in our home churches to help the brethren. We talk about cooking classes for the world. Yeah. Let me tell you, we need cooking classes for the brethren. Mm-hmm. That the brethren can be equipped to help their neighbor. Mm-hmm. Because the place where you're going to have your home open to most likely first is going to be with John that you've known for 10 years down the road who's having a struggle with whatever, deep vein thrombosis. <laughs> something like that. And you can say, John, let me try something. You know, I got this thing here. It might help you. Come on over for lunch and we're going to do a little bit of water treatment on your leg and see how it does. Right? That's kind of how it opens up. Understanding the intelligent use of water is another very important thing. It's more powerful than all the drug medication in the world, the prophet says. I've witnessed it, by the way. I've witnessed the intelligent use of water do what modern medicine and all its billions could not do. That's not a knock on modern medicine. There's there's very important things in modern medicine, right? Very important things. But God's given away that are his doctors that can do things that humanity has not yet been able to figure out. Do you want to know what the key element is? 
Is it just CH2O? Mm -hmm. Or it is the blessing of God in ordaining that treatment for the healing of disease? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's what we're applying, right? So we're ascertaining the cause. We're learning about proper diet. We're learning about hydrotherapy, right? And I want to read this quote here. This comes from Health 506. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation. I want to ask you, can anybody see that forming up in a greater capacity than we've ever witnessed in our lives? Okay. And of course, we could talk about what religion you have, because there are lots of things that are religions that aren't necessarily called religions, and there's been people pretty aggressive about some of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation. Mm -hmm. Those who would stand for freedom of conscience, Every Seventh-day Adventist is called to make that stand. Mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists have a message of liberty of conscience. If you believe in the third angel's message at all, you must believe that liberty of conscience is an issue worth standing for. Mm -hmm. Right? Medical missionaries should know a lot about liberty of conscience. Amen. Right? As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. Can you see that coming down the pike? Yeah. Okay. For their own sake, they should, while they have the opportunity, okay, that's, that's today. Today we should, while we have opportunity, do what? Become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. This is the time for us to become intelligent regarding disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. All those, notice that word all, all those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. Going to their houses or them coming to your house. Anywhere. I've been in places that were highly prejudiced against white people. Understandingly so, because the last white person that went there with a Bible raped, brutalized, tortured, and murdered their children by the hundreds mm -hmm. in the name of God of life. Mm -hmm. Changed their names, shaved their heads, brutalized them, and took their culture away. I went there as a white guy with a Bible. The Sabbath light had never been there before, and it was highly prejudiced. Get off my land, white boy. going to talk to somebody they just look at you with disgust and turn their head away because they don't even they can't stomach to look at you and I understand why they had a misrepresentation of the God that I serve I understand it I get it I had to say that to some of them I get it but that's not the God I serve what disarmed those prejudices it was medical missionary Amen. there's a reason why it's called the entering wedge in holding a health booth and presentation there we were able to make the first contacts with these people because they're suffering with diabetes and cancer and and uh and uh, kidney failure because they live on porcupine beaver seal and alcohol alcohol that's it and so in doing that i got the first connections where then was able to turn into an evangelistic series that then turned into two church flips with all the leadership and pastors. <laughs> Why? Because of medical missionary work. I could have looked there and held up this very Bible, that's the one that I had, and held it right up and said, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of judgment has come. I'm not knocking that. That's my wheelhouse, right? That's what we're called to do. But the entering wedge is found in that. And that's how God opened it up. Mm -hmm. So watch this here. You'll find a field of labor anywhere you go, even if they're prejudiced against you. This is the point here. All those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. They will be, there will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help. Not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who do not know the truth. The shortness of time demands an energy that has not been
then arouse among those who claim to believe the present truth. Shortness of time is here. What's that quote from? That quote is Councils on Health 506. Thank you. This is the shortness of time. We're here at this camp meeting because we believe in medical missionary work. Mm -hmm. The image of the beast is being risen up before our very eyes. Mm -hmm. The king of the north is rising to mm -hmm. smash the king of the south. Mm -hmm. The king of the south is pretty ugly and has overplayed his hand and now saying he's coming to get your children to the LGBTQ and force all these things upon you. Mm -hmm. Marxism, all this stuff, raging in our nation. Mm -hmm. And thinking people that aren't necessarily conservative Republican, by the way. Mm -hmm. Thinking independents. Thinking people are saying this thing is nasty, it's gone too far, we gotta get America back to God, we gotta make America great again. I'm not getting political. I have no donkey or elephant that's gonna save this nation. No. I have a rock that was cut without hands, it's gonna smash the statue's feet. Amen. And I have a God who's promised that there will be 144,000. That's what I have. So I'm not talking bad or good about any candidate, but I'm here to tell you that time is short. And there's a reason why we're here discussing these things. Because mm -hmm. God's going to have a people listen. My home. I've received so many calls for people who need help from all over the world willing to come to our little home. I mean, flying across the great pond to come to our little home. Why is that? because they hear an answer to the problem that they're not hearing anywhere else. You wanna know why? Because the gospel is a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if you have the true gospel, you're gonna have the true solution to their problems. And they're willing to come from far and wide. So watch this. Let's just say five calls a week to come to get treatment at our home. We've had many more calls than that. But let's just say five calls a week. Five calls a week. There are 70 churches in the Northern New England Conference. If every church body was to get behind and support one family in that church, all across the United States, it would be much better to have more than one family. But let's just start practical here. One family. And help them in ways that they need help. Because I've had to do it. Just me and my family with our kids strapped on our backs and wrangling them and doing a poultice here and all that. It's <laughs> nice to have some help. Mm -hmm. One family that one of those 70 churches, every church, 70 of them supports one family to open up five calls a week for just my home. Now let's say we have 70 homes in the conference that can have five calls a week. That's three, how many calls is that? Three, 260. Five. What's that? 270 times oh, seven. five. 70 times 350 five. people a week going to God's remnant people for solutions. Now you're not gonna be able to take all of those, but maybe somebody else will open a home. And maybe, maybe we actually can be treating five new people a week around every single church. Maybe we can be having 350 people from the world every week coming into our homes and being ministered to. How many weeks are there in a year? 52. Somebody do that math. A lot. What evangelistic effort are we doing that ever bears fruit like that? Mm -hmm. that this, is, this is about finishing the work. And if you really want to be serious about finishing the work, I'm not guilt tripping anybody here. I'm just no. stating a fact. Open your door for a meal with somebody. And if you need training, guess what? I praise the Lord that in this conference, we have a health ministries team. We're all part of this health ministries team mm -hmm. present here, right? Mm -hmm. Who has made themselves available by the grace of God to respond to churches who are reaching out and saying, you know what, we'd like to get some training or learn some more on this that we may be equipped to serve in our community. It's a miracle, friends. <laughs> it is a miracle that this conference is currently embracing that model. That the conference wants to be part of taking health ministry education to the churches that there might be home sale. That is a miracle. That's a sign of Jesus' coming. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's mm -hmm. it. And so here we are. So you're right here in this meeting. Mm -hmm. This is just a little, you know, we're just sitting around a fire here in a beautiful little lodge, right? But how many churches are represented here? Mm -hmm. If there's any churches here that are wanting to learn more and think that this is valuable for training, 
This is a time that we can reach out to the health ministries, right, to seek to have some training come to the churches so that there can be home sanitariums open up because ultimately what this needs to turn into is 70 home sanitariums in this conference. Mm -hmm. So Eric, can I yeah. get back, not get back, but continue in another practical line. One thing, you know, because we're not necessarily sharing academic information right now, we're just sharing ideas. One thing that I think you could do to make yourself more uh, equipped is think practically the first thing, if, you're, if you've got space in your home, make a room available, have it ready, the bed made, everything ready to go. So that would be another one practical thing. Um, and then the next practical thing is if you're not, maybe, you know, don't have uh, information or knowledge yet of what to do, invest in some books. Some key ones, some encyclopedias. I like Agatha Thrash's Natural Remedy Encyclopedia. What's the purple and blue and flowered one? What's that one called? Home Remedies. That's a good one. Just get resources so when people call you or say, I don't know. You mean the big, the big huge, purple one. one. Yes. Because the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia yeah, the natural remedies. Time is time yes. is easy yeah. to yep. navigate. Get several of those. And, and then become acquainted with several other medical missionaries or even health qualified health professionals. And qualified doesn't necessarily mean a degree or license, although that's not bad either. But become in contact so you can say, okay, I've got my room, I've got a book, and this is what this is saying. Let me just double check with somebody. Multitude of counselors, there is what? Wisdom, yeah. And so you've got people that are ready and willing to answer questions. And so that is practical. So have some books, have some friends, and have a room. If you've got a room, you've got it made. And you know what? Uh, don't worry about the finances. I've, I've never had a circumstance where working with the Lord, I've come up dry. I mean, there have been times where there's little, but there's never none. And so oftentimes the Lord will move upon somebody or that individual, or he'll just sustain what you have. So a room, a bed, those are gold. That's a luxury. Um, you know, running water, hot water, electricity, you've got those things. Wow, amazing got some books, you have friends, you have everything one needs to have an effective medical missionary home sanitarium, you know? And uh, you don't know how to make food yet? Well, start inviting and saying, as Dr. Howe and Lynn say, I want to try a recipe. <laughs> You've got, you can't go wrong with good ingredients. Yeah. Our lifestyle is a testimony Amen. to people because they ask. Mm -hmm. And when they, that happens, the door is open. Now they're inviting you so you can give all the information, the gospel, and everything. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, just one, one encouraging piece is that sometimes you'll encounter a person asking for help. And I know one of my, or two of our boys were in college and they got to know this young girl who came down with cancer and she was dying. <clears throat> and they contact, she contacted us and said, can I please come and be at your home? Mm -hmm. And I looked in my heart and I thought, I can't do it. The father still was being in our home and, and dying. Someone that I loved and valued was just too painful. But then I thought about it and I said, if God, if you're asking me to do this, then you will provide it. Mm. And he did it. Wow. And so I just offered that as an encouragement because I thought, I can help you know people, all sorts of people, no problem. And, and I love people and it's wonderful. But the thought of someone dying, mm -hmm. it's like, it was like a bridge too far. But God absolutely provided, and mm -hmm. through the time she was there, like a piece of heaven. Amen. And yeah. I, I'll never forget it. You know, she was sitting, lying on her window seat, and Tim patched this, he made a, a, a thing so that she could breathe very cold, fresh air. Anyway, we did all kinds of things mm -hmm. to try and help her, and... It was, it was a piece of heaven. Amen. You know, I think that's so beautiful that you shared that. Death is not a scary thing. Death, is, I, I've been with many people as they as pass away. Um, there is definitely some sadness involved with it. But if they come to a relationship with Christ, you didn't fail. There's no failing, really, in medical missionary work other than maybe having bad motivation in you. If you're pride or selfish or anything, that's where you fail. But any effort, the Bible, uh, Spirit of Prophecy says, will be blessed. Any effort toward medical missionary work lines will be blessed. So, you know, it's such a sweet experience. I think almost every, no, I'm not going to say every, but many of my 
death experiences um, have been so sweet and so amazing, and they're just ready to see their Lord uh, when He comes. And it's just a beautiful experience. So I'm so glad you said that. And uh, so, um, what are some other practical things that we've just gleaned from hearing some testimonies? So, have a room if you can do that. If you can't, go to other people's rooms. Often, there's so many people that want us to just go there to their place or you know be in there and oftentimes that's easier for them they don't have to change they don't have to move they're familiar with that environment so have a room if you have a room great if somebody else has a room be mobile get a little kit together if you've got running water or those kind of things that's nice okay what are some other things just a comment on the kit yeah in, in your home or, or to go you know tubs are very important, but I'm talking about little tubs. Yeah. Like you would use for a foot bath, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, when you're doing certain, like if you're doing fomentations, I was just doing fomentations on my wife. I was, I, I flew back in from a conference in New York on Thursday, and my wife was laid up and 105.8 fever and oxygen level of 84. Mm-hmm. Not good. And our O2 levels haven't been above 87 for a couple days. Mm-hmm. Not good. And she's having a heart, so jump right in and you know, where did I go? I grabbed the tubs. Mm-hmm. You're gonna use tubs a lot. For everything. You need tubs. So I'm talking about, you can get the little tubs at Walmart for just a couple bucks each, a few bucks each, you know what I mean? Not that you have to go to Walmart. The for the I'm better just saying, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, tubs like this and they have them a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. I get all sorts of sizes and we stack them up. Tubs, you need those. Get five or six tubs, you know? You'll easily use a few tubs at any given time. And if you have more than one person, you need more than that. So tubs, cotton, towels, linen, wool. Really important. A whole blanket that you can get from the, you know, army discount store goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Couple wool blankets, um, a shower curtain. Mm-hmm. It goes a long way. You know what? When it came time to do fomentations for my wife, because things were so, like, it hit me as dark, I, didn't, I just grabbed two ponchos. Mm-hmm. They were the first things I saw. Poncho, poncho. Whoosh, throw, them, throw them around her as I'm doing fomentations. Back, front, hot foot bath, ice on the head, you know, doing this whole thing, cold mitten friction in between, right? Doing these things on all the extremities as well as the chest and the back to work to help her lungs to come back. By the grace of God, she went from 84 to 91 on the oxygen level after that treatment. Dropped back down to 87. Did another one, came up from 87 to 93. Dropped back down to 89. Next one, 89, 98. Dropped back down to 92. Okay, I can, I can, 92 is a better place for me than 84. And then we continued, and there she is, staying around 96, right in there. Okay. Much better, right? But what do you need? Towels, mm-hmm. pressure canner, pressure cook. Yeah. I, some people might say, you don't even need that. I know, when we do missionary work in the Dominican Republic, we don't have these things. Mm-hmm. But in the United States, if you're country living anyway, you probably have a pressure canner, mm-hmm. which it helps you be able to make full meditations. Insta pot can, can help. I never use that, I always use the microwave. You can use a microwave. Mm-hmm. We don't have a microwave in the house, but you can use a microwave. I have one down in the shop and I just fire up those things. And so you, whether it's some people do fomentations all different ways and I've done them all different ways, whether it's microwave or dipping and ringing or steaming, right? But you know, just having the ability to make really hot water pretty efficiently and get plenty of towels hot. You know, you might not go out and spend all the money on fomentation pads. Get some cotton towels, a couple different sizes. You know, the, the 16 by 30 works great in some cases, and larger or smaller work, but having that with some wool, with some things that can keep the moisture out, and some bins, and you are well on your way being able to do lots of different hydrotherapy methods. Thermometer, very important, right? Understanding how to check a pulse, understanding how to check blood pressure, understanding how to keep track of temperature and keep the head cool while bringing the rest of the body up to hit them at a 103 level and things like this. These are things that, if you haven't done them, might seem daunting, but once you learn how to do them, you'll say, oh, really not much to it. Just some safety things that I have to keep track of, and this might be more effective here, getting a person hotter quicker or whatever, right? And so 
there's not a lot to get involved in doing home sanitarium work very efficiently and very effectively, especially for some of the things that we've seen going around in recent years that are really concerning for people. Right. You can be set up with just what I mentioned there and be pretty effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to, in closing, and then, and then AJ can take it from there, read two verses. And I think this is so powerful. Let's go to Romans 14, 12. And I really like, this has been brought up a number of times, but this idea of liberty, and part of what Christ came to do was to set, set at liberty people who were in bondage to whatever it was, sickness, disease, sin. But the whole principle of the gospel is liberty, and the whole message of God, who God is, is love. God is love. And love is not coercive, love is not condemning. Okay? So I like this verse, and I'm going to go a very specific way because it's pertinent to the time that we're living in and also to how we should respond and react as medical missionaries. So then every one of us, so that's 14.12 of Romans, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. We are all held accountable individually for what we do. And we're going to give an account to God. And if we go to for, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10, 2 Corinthians 5.10 is the next book over, well, two books technically. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says this, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to uh, that he hath done, whether be good or bad. So we're all held accountable to God individually. Okay, And it's not our job to make people do the right thing. We can't do that. That's not loving. You can't override somebody's conviction or free will. They have to come to, we just share information. The principal work of a med uh, medical missionary is education, health education, training people in right principles, okay? And God has never forced you, neither should we force anybody else, right? Because if we're Christ's example, if we're Christians following Christ's example, we shouldn't be coercive either. And ultimately, the whole big picture of the great controversy is a coercive power versus a not coercive power. There's coming a time where even uh, uh, worship is going to be attempted to be coerced. Well, that's not of God. Anytime you see coercion, it's not of God. God is love, which means free, free sacrifice, liberty, all of that. So we all are accountable individually, even that individual. So it's not your job to make that individual do the right thing. It's your job to help inform them and to help them if they want it. Does anybody have any last um, thoughts or comments in, in closing? Just remember those verses in Revelation talked about worship the God who made and to bring them back to the maker and creation where it talks about the fresh air and it talks about the water, all those things. And then you get to go back to the intelligence and say if there, there was a maker and he designed you you can point him back to design and reason with people, cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And then he's also the Redeemer, so that gives you an option to come back to him. Amen. Amen. The Savior. And any man being Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. We hold all things have become new. Amen. There were some quotes that you read on your computer. I was just wondering if you could... Yeah, email me. Okay. Email me, josiahjkw at gmail.com and ask me what you want. J at one spirit prophecy J quote. J -Q -W? J -K -W. J -K -W. Josiah Kroger, one more. This is letter 97, 1898. Principles here for, for us in this work, right? Based on what you just said. You can't force them. The love of Christ in the heart is what is needed. Amen? Self is in need of being crucified. This is for every one of us, but this is also for the people that are coming in principle for help. When self is submerged in Christ, true love springs forth spontaneously. It is not an emotion or an impulse, but a decision of a sanctified will. It consists not in feeling, but in the transformation of the whole heart, soul, and character which is dead to self and alive unto God. 
Our Lord and Savior asks us to give ourselves to Him. That's in this point here. This is what happens in medical missionary work as people are educated about self. This next verse right here. Surrendering self to God is all He requires. Giving ourselves to Him to be employed as He sees fit. And so when you're working with people in medical missionary lines, you're coming by their side in through Christ's love and sympathy engaging in an educational process to help them to learn how to surrender the heart to God in natural law, physical law, in moral law. And that's going to happen when they see the beauty of his character, the author of natural law, physical law, moral law, revealed in this process that then the heart is gladdened in that revelation and now made capable of surrendering in those lines that they may now embrace the health reform Amen. and all the other reforms in the train. Right? It's a delicate work of ministry that brings physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health and rejuvenation. Amen. Thank you, brother. Do you, you close this out? Sure. Lord, thank you so much that we can gather this information. You say, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And Jesus Christ is the, is the truth. So we're perished without Christ, and He wants to instruct us in the ways of creation, in recreation, and sympathy. Lord, we need those new hearts, and that comes from the Holy Spirit. So we pray that You would put that Spirit in everyone here, Lord. I pray that the churches, that Your Spirit would be poured, upon that, poured on them. And that there would be a treatment room associated with every church, whether it's through a church member or the church makes some way to work that out, Lord. May there be a beautiful, sweet flame of health and healing come out of this conference. Amen. Inspire everyone wherever they go. And may the stories, Lord, faith comes from hearing the stories of healings and the stories of sweet people be spread throughout this conference. And people are attracted to our churches and a loving Savior. So please, Lord, bless us all. Let us be hearers and doers. Amen. In Christ's name, amen. 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 amen.